I was a, I was a kid that wanted, wanted to party, you know, I looked up to a lot of surfers and stuff, and what I seen them doing was partying, so that's what I wanted to do. So at about 11, I started kind of drinking a little bit. By 13, I was, I was getting drunk most weekends, and that was just surfing like every day. So, and I was just scattered all the time. <laughs> and that, that, was, that was what was going on. And then um, that escalated to when I was 15 years old, I moved out of home and uh, lived with my sister and her boyfriend. I started smoking pot. I was in year 11, I actually I decided that I'm going to try God out, see, see what it's all about, not making any decisions. So I did and I started reading the word heaps and started studying it a bit and I mean, it was pretty cool, like I couldn't prove it wrong. Between taking drugs and stuff I gave my heart to God five times at youth groups and stuff. And that's crazy but it was more like I'll give you my heart, be my Lord, be my Saviour. I reckon I experienced God but it was always I want it my way. Year 12 holidays, I started drinking a bit more and having a little, little bit of um, marijuana too. I felt like I was in Funville, you know. I mean, it really did, it felt good. So I just took a, a bunch of drugs and um, broken friendships, broke the law and ruined my body, you know what I mean? After that, for three weeks, I considered what I was going to do with my life. So conclusion was, there's no point to life, it's just torment, you know, constantly just searching for satisfaction. You might get it for a little bit and then it's gone again. It even escalated more. I moved back home and like, you know, I was like, I want change and stuff and I moved to dad's and then what happened was I just started doing the same stuff. For three weeks I considered whether I was going to kill myself or not. Actually, I was planning, planning to do that or take a lot of drugs. Yeah. And um, I felt God speak to me and he said, you've got two roads, um, you've got two choices and it's two roads. One's wide and you're on it, it's leading to destruction, that's where you're at. And I'm like, yeah, I'm at it. And the other one's narrow and it's hard to get on, but that's the way, you know what I mean? That's, there's a reason to live on that, there's a peace that, that will be constant. And um, at that time, I was thinking, all right, I know I'm hearing from God, I was certain of it, but I, I wasn't satisfied with that because if I told anyone about that, you know, it just sounds like a crazy voice in your head. So I said, God, um, if you're real, like looking all over the place, don't know where to look, where's God, you know what I mean? If you're real, I want you to reveal yourself to me right now. And if you do that, I'll give you my life and you can do whatever you want with it. You can either get rid of me, like you can, I've heard of God just wiping out people so he can get rid of me or he can use me. Either way, it's, you can do whatever you want, but I want to know if you're real. I literally, a tangible love fell on me, and it, what, what, what happened was that my, my body's response was I dropped to, to the ground on my knees and just started crying. It was gross, it was snot everywhere. <laughs> I just started crying, and the funny thing is, I, from the age of about 13, I grew up with a bunch of brothers, and I just, I never really expressed my emotions by crying and stuff. It's, it doesn't mean you're tough, but I just didn't do it like that. I've broken bones and I've chipped teeth and I just never really cried. I just got kind of pissed off. And God dropped me to my knees. I cried and I knew at that point that God was real. So um, I was a Christian. That was when I was following Jesus. You know, a Christian is people who follow Christ. And, and when we, you know, when you follow someone, when you're devoted to them, they, they tell us to do stuff and we do it. And it's not like he's like, go change the world for me and see you later. It's like he gives us the strength to do it. So it's, all, it's like all him and all we do is just we step out for him. We walk by faith, you know. We're stepping out. And we're receiving the stuff that he, he, we need. I love it. It's all Jesus, man. <laughs> yeah. I see the opportunities that I have now, you know, redeem. And every time that happens, I'm just like, God, give me strength and just step out to the place where I'm like, I don't think I'll be able to do it, but I step out anyway. So I'm like, I know God can do it, I can't do it. But step out in a place where you go on, I trust you, God. A lot of people can just stop there, but you know, we're still human beings and there's still sin and temptations and stuff. What happened is um, I was charging hard for God, telling everyone about Jesus. And there was a point where 
I had like a dry season for like three months where I just didn't hear from God. And I didn't like that because it's meant to be a relationship. So I said, um, God, what's going on? Like, why aren't you talking to me? You know, I was still reading my Bible and stuff like that. And like, why aren't you talking to me? And you said, um, you said, I've been talking to you. You're just not listening. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do. And I'm like, still kind of confused. And he says, I want you to start a Bible study at school. And I was like, that, that's why I wasn't listening. You know what I mean? I'm in year 12 and I've got it going on, I reckon, anyway. And he tells me to start a Bible study. So I was on me. God spoke to me again. And I, this is after I'm a Christian. I'm following Jesus. And I said, if I'm serious about this, I've got to start it. You know, um, who do I fear more, man or God? And so I got to school and I... It was a testing moment, so I just pushed out of my comfort zone and God gave me the strength and I talked to the teachers and principal about it. I said, can I start a Bible study? I want to tell people about Jesus. Told them my encounter, they're stoked out because I was such a scumbag of a student (laughs) and they're stoked out because I'm following Jesus. And they said, yeah. And then um, skip it. The morning comes with the Bible study and I tell them, I say to the office, they said, please just don't mention my name. (laughs) Just say that there's a Bible study on. So a bit of pride there and I gave permission for God to get rid of that, so he did. I just lost like 80% of my friends like that, just gone. You know, if I had five friends, it was like half a person less. <laughs> and um, so I'm, I'm like, whatever, that, I guess that's a good thing as well, you know, I find out who my real friends are. And then what happens is um, I'm like praying all day, like God's going to bring revival to this school, you know, people are going to get saved, you know, I reckon the whole school's going to be up there at lunch, you know, I'm going to tell people about Jesus, they're going to hear it, and they're going to receive, you know what I mean? Lunch goes for 45 minutes, it's been 40 minutes, nobody's there, you know, the shame, like I'm just, it's past the point of shame, you know, I just, any pride that was there is just gone, so I'm just going, God, like I, I feel like God's broken a promise, I was talking to daddy, you know, God, and going, like, am I still talking to the same God that, that saved my life that I encountered? Um, I said, you promised people would be here. And um, he just didn't hear anything, you know, it's just nothing. And then I, I knew I had to do my part, which was stay for the whole session. Because if I, imagine if I left and people came and then God kept his promise, but I didn't keep my side. What happened was two minutes left, there's a bunch of people that come in and I'm like, oh God, you're crazy. He always does that at hey, last minute. I'm just going... Oh, so a few people come in on the outside. I'm just like, yeah, what's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Zach. Um, I guess like I'm not gonna do a session, but I'll just tell you what this is about. Um, this is about Jesus, <laughs> and I want you guys to experience Jesus. And inside, I'm just going like, ah, it's like a stadium around me. You know, it's like victorious. I just defeated, I don't know, something cool, like just something massive. You hang around a giant killer, you're going to become a giant killer. You hang around Jesus, you're going to become like Jesus. You know, Paul said, it's no longer, this is to the extent, you imagine this is a person. You know, sometimes we read the Bible more like, oh, this is cool. And these are actual people. He's gone, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You know, he's gone to that extent where he's just gone like, this is nuts. You know, this is, it's all Jesus. You know, he's just doing all this through me. And I'm going, wow, I'm just going to step out. What do I have to lose? You know, we got, we're on earth once. And then, and death is inevitable. So like, it's like, why wouldn't I do that anyway?